Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord's name be praised. Praise ye the Lord. We are bringing you the Super Champions Hour of the Jesus Cabot Ministries. Just here for short. Formerly Jesus Glory Ministry. And the Glory Cabot is a bigger or the total glory of God encompassing the Shekinah glory, which is the manifest glory of the shiny aspect of God, the color, the rainbow. We are on with our series we have started with, that is with judgment, the positive side. So God is bringing to you that. It's not always when we talk about judgment that we think about God punishing some person or you yourself, calling for judgment and punishment for somebody who has offended you or have betrayed you. And we've seen that judgment is one of the six doctrines, fundamental doctrine, pillars of the Christian faith. If you remove it out of it, then Christianity ceases to be Christianity. Then it becomes just a man-made religion. And that means the wicked will triumph. Evil people, Machiavellian type of people, the end just what that means, they'll use by hook and by crook to do everything evil and kill and make and fabricate and send you to prison. Why they rather should go to prison? They become untouchable. No, we see that the whole creation is groaning with pain and it's justice of God, judgment, that will act like a cure for a cancer, cancerous growth, malignant disease and viruses because sin, evil, brings decay, not only in the life of human being, your personal life, if you are sinning, and it will affect your family, and not only that, it will affect your township, and it will affect the whole nation, the whole world. So sin going on rampant everywhere, as the Jesus said, in the last days, sin will abound. That's why the love of people will grow cold, and there will be truth breakers. People will betray their parents. People will not be loyal to their spouses, wives to their husband, husband to that of their wives, as well as children being radicals, disobedient, proud and arrogant against adults, against their own parents, hard-hearted. No. In such society, it becomes a jungle law, the law of the jungle, survival of the fittest. But as you eat one another, you'll be eating also one day. Today, we are dealing with a subtopic, the positiveness of justice and judgment. We have already said the previous one about the correlation, the link between justice and judgment. Justice arises out of judgment. It's part and parcel of the nature, the character of God. Not that God has it. God is it. Just that God is love. It's part of the fruit of God, the character in it. Why? We will see why. So whenever we talk about judgment and justice, they are dealing with being healed because there being a decay and everything is out of balance. So everybody too is out of balance. Instead of working with our legs, we are working with our heads. And we are dizzy all around, falling, and being in, in, in comatose and the like. We are blind, we fall into gutter, the gutter of life. We get drowned, our marriage get drowned, our minds get drowned, our emotion. We become psychiatric cases. In clinical psychology, says psychiatrists make it every money out of us, every dollar out of every cent. They try to help, but they can't touch it. They themselves cannot take care of themselves. They try with the brain. The brain is bigger than them, and the brain, there's something behind the brain. The cause of culture. It's the human spirit. They can't touch it. There's no philosophers, psychiatry or clinical psychology that have understood life. Check the Bible. You can't. The greatest philosopher is no Socrates or Plato. Do you understand it? It is King Solomon. Check it. Nobody has spewed out proverbs, songs, and the likes and why saying as he did. He exploited everything in life. More than the one we call the father of modern psychology. What did he know? He told the fear of God. 
that King Solomon got to know that will solve the whole problem. You try psychology without God, you are dead. Number one, God infinitely hates sin, hence his wrath. When you talk about judgment, you are thinking about God's wrath, God's judgment. It will come one day. But before then, we've seen the very type of judgment. One of it is past. All the wrath and anger of God was vented on our substitute, somebody in our behalf. God himself, God the Son, Jesus Christ, at the cross of Calvary. But those who reject it, he has seven more years to deal with you. Don't go wrath. Couple with the great tribulation of the Antichrist. After the rapture, when the Holy Spirit goes up with the Church of Jesus Christ, God infinitely hates sin, hence his wrath. God made the whole universe infinitely to reflect his infinite holy character. Remember, holy character. God is immaculate. <laughs> There's not an outer or spot, wrinkle, or blemish in him. And no other being in life, in heaven or on earth, visible and visible, has that attribute. Judgment and justice are character of God. Just that love and mercy and grace. Because God is infinitely holy. He infinitely hates sin. And we've seen that sin is evil. They're not just lying and fornication and, and stealing. Sin is evil and brings about moral decay to your life. Don't double yourself in sin. You may sin. And then repent quickly. Don't love sin. You may sleep yet dead. The enemy may take advantage of you. The Bible says, but then the shed blood of Jesus in the past are paid for everything that is current for past present and future for even the last baby yet to be conceived and born until christ come and even thereafter but there are judgment that will come upon you for the evil if there be no god even to judge you your own sin will find you out moses said for whatever man sows so shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you will reap corruption and death if you sow to the spirit, you live life eternal. To so God infinitely hates sin, hence his wrath, his anger. Wrath is fierce anger. If you have little anger of God, you can't stand. And not only that, human beings also will execute judgment on you. You went to take somebody's wife. Look at the Bible. He said you will be his perpetual enemy. He will always be looking out for the day he will get you. He will kill you. <laughs> he will kill you. Uh, that's why when they catch a thief, they beat him up for killing. Because he also is out. What you have spent the whole last one to acquire, he comes within a few minutes to take it. And when he gets you, he will kill you. And you say human right. But when he did that, was it not against your human right too? Number two, God's nature of justice leads to judgment. You see, God's nature of justice, it is his nature, it's part of his attribute. It's intrinsic. God justice arises out of his moral holiness. If God were not holy, then there will be no judgment, there will be no justice. Then sin and evil will run rampant and destroy everything like a cancer of virus. This is seen in his A, upholding righteousness, God's holy character. God judges because he's holy, he's righteous. He we see that in his upholding righteousness. Deuteronomy 10, 17 to 18, Psalm 89, verse 14. Let's take them one by one. Deuteronomy 10, 17 to 18. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of laws, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes, I have you seen it? Human judges. <laughs> he defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. It's without partiality. It's because of his holiness. 
So you don't take advantage of the weak and the needy and the poor and the, and the homeless. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness or mercy and faithfulness, King James said, go before you. When we are talking about mercy also, we are talking about the loving kindness of God. Righteousness and justice. What God sits on like I'm sitting on, God sits on his throne forever. The foundation of it is set on righteousness and justice. You say what? If it were not so, then it's easy to be God. He has no right to interfere in our moral life. What is good and right is part and past. You should know it and accept it. You didn't create the universe. And we have learned that sin evil brings moral decay and the whole creation. Your sin, which you are enjoying, you are running around, sowing wild oats. And you are an adult. You are suffering the fans of the soil. You have formed yourself into a kaba. And you are untouchable. Nobody can touch you. You kill. You maim. You are bought the judges. You bought the security. You bought the police. And your children. And your grandchildren. For generations. You are untouchable. <laughs> Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Psalm 97 verse 2. I won't be by the point. Clouds and thick darkness surrounding righteousness and justice are foundation of his throne. Remember, he emphasizes it. God's love of righteousness requires that there be absolute justice and unerring judgment in heaven. Unerring. That there should be no mistake in his judgment. This calls for God sitting as a judge of all his creation. Without it, then he can't judge the heavens, he can't judge angels, he can't judge the earth, he can't judge humans, he can't judge fallen spirit, he can't judge Lucifer, Satan, he can't judge the fallen angels. But he does. Why? He receives no bribe. He can't be corrupted. Because when a judge, when a leader, when a president, when a governor, when a senator, when a house of representative, when a mayor, when a councillor, whatever it is, when a CEO, mandate director, when God has blessed you with money, when it comes to the high tech. No, you use it right. Don't say you are you you you, you are stifling free speech and the lies. <laughs> the foundation of God, the judge of the heaven and earth, is righteousness and justice. If human beings blink their eyes over the evil things you do, God will let the whole creation. Remember, read the book of Psalms and others. David was saying, birds even will come and pluck your eyes. The earth will spew you up. The, the, the wind will be against you. The sun will be against you, the whole creation, because you are causing them to be in decay and in bondage. They will fight you. They will fight you. It doesn't need man to fight you. It doesn't need God to fight you. Your environment you are talking about, you care by man. By your sin and rebellion, you are polluting it. It's not for safe word. Your sins are polluting the environment. You have put everything in the solar system out of balance and beyond the solar system. Let's see Genesis 18, 25. Far be it from you to do such a thing, Abraham was telling God, to kill the righteous in relation with Sodom and Gora, with the wicked. Treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? God judges because of his righteousness. And you are not righteous. You love wickedness. Evil. <laughs> God is not like you. Not like any man. Psalm 58 verse 11. Then people will say, Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. That means when evil people triumph, the Bible says, The people mourn. You let officers, political officers, and they are charlatans. Your religious leaders are charlatans, wicked, evil. And you go fight for them and vote for them. You are dead and they too are dead. Psalm 96, verse 13, Ecclesiastes 3, 17 says, Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. God doesn't do things out of his whims and caprices.
God doesn't take decision based on sentimental or emotional thing that has happened to him. Ecclesiastes 3, 70. I said to myself, God will break into judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. A time. <laughs> you and your family. You are the elite, so-called aristocracy eh, of the world. <laughs> and it seems as if you always thought injustice. The Bible says, Paul wrote, there are some people that their sins and the wicked thing goes ahead of them before judgment. That's why you are judged and you are in prison and the life is better. And there are those who their sins and evil follow them unto judgment. That is the last day before the great white throne of the Father. It's better you'll be caught for you to repent. You'll be punished. You'll be put to shame for a while. But it's better than cover your sin. The Bible says he that covers sins not white. Then you face the great white throne of the Father. There'll be no recourse for second opportunity again for repentance. You'll be in the lake of fire and priest of forever. Hebrews 12, 23. It says, To the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. Now look at Revelation 18, 18. When they see the smoke of a burning, they will exclaim, it's talking about Babylon. Babylon is not physical Babylon today, which is in, was in Iraq. But everything that Babel, the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis, and everything Babylonian kingdom by Nebuchadnezzar and the Red did became symbolic of every evil Babylonian system, Antichrist practices and doctrine, teachings. Everything that rebels against God, that God is it, and is the judge of the earth. Everything you do, everything you do in entertainment, everything you do in politics, the laws you pass, your custom, everything you do in the movie, everything you do in education, the curriculum and the practice are anti-God, wicked. He's waiting for you. You better repent now. Revelation 18, 18. When they smell the smoke of a burning, all the gold and the diamonds and the like and the dollars and the pounds that are that are hoarded by you. <laughs> he said that one day you yourself will see the system you have built. Babylon in the Bible is a system, evil system, godless system, antichrist system, satanic system, luciferian. And they themselves say, all this connection we have them, we are hiding behind the scene and the like. Whatever is city like this city. That's what they say. Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. We are talking about the correlation between judgment and justice and the positive side of it. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded the book. Everything we have done is being recorded. And if it's good, you will give you reward, but it's visible. It's covered. You covered it. You killed the person. You did that. You spoiled the thing and you, you changed the records. You are hiding it. And when they say the security force should break it and because of your connection and high up, they, 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 they stonewall. <laughs> you, you are not wise. The Bible says, He who confesses his sister or he who confesses God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from every unrighteous sin. According to what they are done as recorded up. Good things you will be rewarded. Evil things your sin will find you out. Psalm 35 verse 7. It is God who judges. He brings one down. He exalts another. He will demote and he will promote. Don't think your time will not come. God has dealt gently with you. The Bible says God is long suffering. In his judgment, he's long suffering. He is patient. He doesn't want you to get destroyed. He knows you are blood and flesh. He knows you are clay. So the Bible says he pities you like a father pities his son. You think you are wise? You are smart alec. Romans 2:9. There will be trouble in this earth for every human being who does evil. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Colossians 3, 25, 81 who does wrong, will be repaid for their wrongs. Go and ask King, the first murderer. He killed and buried his, uh, his brother and covered the blood. But the blood was speaking from under the earth. And then God said, King, King, where is their brother? He said, I'm my brother's keeper. He said, God said, the blood of your, 
of your brother whom you made. He's calling out to me for vengeance. You think nobody saw it. Or you saw it and your, your, your fathers and mothers are the big shot of the community or the nation. You are dead. Anyone who does wrong will be paid for their wrong. And there's no favoritism. Do you hear? Even if you are Christian, you don't double yourself in nefarious activity. Don't join them, the Bible said. Don't put your pairs together. When evil people come and say, John has to stay, John has to do that. Don't. It's not only in the area of money. When they say, John has to, to, to be sexually immoral, don't. There's no favoritism with God. He said, right, your day. Then, First Peter 1 Peter 1.70 says, Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in Reventry. We are travelers. We are pilgrims. This world is not our own. So that those who think they have escaped judgment here, your, your sin will follow you to the great white room. Do you understand me? And you, the Christian, don't be fooling about all that, that you will reject the Bible said there's no partiality. So we are not talking about the Father. God will judge the sinner and we Christians know every sin that you don't confess and cleanse by the blood of the is waiting for you. You see, when we were sinning, the walls and the items like this place and the lightings and everything were witness to it. They will speak. You think only human beings speak. Inanimate in stones. That's what Jesus said. You said the children should keep their mouth tight on the day of the Palm Sunday. He said if they keep their mouth shut, the stones will cry out, Hosanna. <laughs> you, you, you are blind spiritually and deaf spiritually. That's why you don't know that everything in life speaks. Everything in life speaks. And if everything in life speaks, then you think human beings can speak who are made in the likeness image of God. Psalm 75 verse 70. But God is the judge. He puts down one and sits, sets up another. We'll be concluding like this in dealing with justice and judgment. The positive side of it. God's clear sense of right and wrong, remember, will not permit him to show any partiality. He's no respecter of persons and cannot be tempted, bribed, or influenced to do anything else except what is absolutely just. That's how we call justice. Just judgment is because of somebody being just. He's the supreme champion of righteousness. And his kingdom is the kingdom of righteousness. Check Mark, Matthew 6, verse 33. And also check Romans 2, verse 9. Colossians 3, 25. And 1 Peter 1, 70. Matthew 6, 33. Romans 2, 9. Colossians 3, 25. 1 Peter 1, 70. Let's do look to the Lord in prayer. As we go ahead, you have seen the positive of judgment, bringing about justice, and the justice being born out of the holiness. Holiness. When we talk about holiness, it's not just people think that holiness is just that I don't for the God, I'm not involved in it. Holiness, holiness, you don't understand what it is. Holiness comes from the world. Holiness, so that there is moral health, spiritual health, physical health, financial health, nothing broken, nothing missing. Nothing broken, nothing missing. Let me repeat myself. Holiness involves the state in which there's nothing broken, nothing missing. <laughs> health. Remember the key word health. Health. H E A L T H. If I'm not pronouncing it as well, I've spelled it for you. Health. It's involved the health of your life, the health of society, the health of the nation. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I've seen. I've seen that judgment, that judgment and justice, and justice arises, arises out of the love of God, out of the love of God and His love for holiness, and His love for holiness, purity, purity and soundness, and soundness, wholeness, wholeness for sin, for sin is a cancer, is a cancer, sin, sin, evil. Evil is a virus. It's a virus. I detach myself from it. I detach myself from it. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. As a sinner. As a sinner. And, and wash me. And wash me. With your blood. With your blood. And come into my heart. And come into my heart. As my Lord. As my Lord. And personal savior. And personal savior. I thank you. I thank you. That you have come in. That you have come in. I'm now born again. I'm now born again. I pass from 
death unto life. I've passed from death unto life. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'll introduce you to godly life. Godliness will contact me. Spiritual exercise, four of them, which we must do daily. You don't do it as and when you feel like. You don't feel like. You don't feel like before you open your eyes and you get out of bed to go to work or go to school. You don't say, I want to feel like before. No. In the same way, you may not feel like, but the word of God is food for your spirit. The Bible, feed on it. We don't just read it, we feed. It's food for your spirit and so. And it's medicine for your whole body. Proverbs 4, 18 to 20 tells us that. And many other places. Don't know my truth. Pray with us and pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Prayer is communication with your father. Now God is your father. You don't have a biological father. Your father rejected you. Or he never knew your father. It's a one night stand with your mother. Or he denied the pregnancy. Or you saw him, but he both out of the house. Like a rolling stone, a bomb. And you have met with the mafias, the gangs around your community. You think that's a family. That's not God. It's not your family. It's a father to you. Talk to him. He will take care of you. The Bible says he's the father to the fatherless. And husband to the widows. He takes care of the weak in society. who run to him. And then number three. I think the Bible believe in change. When it's based on the Bible, not personality called, the center of that church is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the church of Jesus Christ, not the church of the one who says the founder. The founder is Jesus. We are used to pioneer denominations of the church as a new stream of ministry. But it was Jesus who bought his church on the cross of Calvary. And he said he would build his ecclesia, he would build his church, the legislative assembly. And the gates of hell shall not prevail the gate. He entered into the territory of Satan, and nothing can stand against the ecclesia of the Lord, the Church of Jesus. And no man for tell others about the saving power of the Lord Jesus. Give your life that you have received from Christ as a testimony. As you grow in Christ, you learn more of the scriptures, and also you talk to them using the scripture and your personal experience. In Jesus' name we pray and we'll meet the next time to tell with session four of this series of the judgment, the positive side. And today we rounded it with justice and judgment, the positive side of it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest in life. And may the peace, the shalom of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with us until we meet again. Jesus, the good quality. Amen. 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 Amen.